All right, today we're going to talk about code.org's mouse input lesson. Um, it's lesson 17. This might change, you know, depending on if they add lessons from year to year, but we are going to talk about mouse input. So the first step in this lesson is they're going to make you make a prediction here. And the prediction is if else. So predict, read through the following program, pay special attention to the if else. So if we go down here and look at the if and the else. So what happens when you press the space bar? So we know if we key down the space bar, if that occurs, the balloon dot scale is going to increase. It's going to go up. And if it doesn't, it's going to go down. So to me, this looks like the balloon is going to increase when we press the space bar, and it's going to decrease when we don't. And if we actually run this, and we if we run that, well, oops, let's reset this a second. If we run it, we press spacebar, it increases. If we don't, it decreases. And that's essentially what happens. So let's, let's look at step two. It says this level follows a video that you may have watched with your class. Um, so it says reverse the gears. Okay, so we are going to spin in one direction when you press the space bar, but you can change the if statement into an if else to make them spin the other direction when the space bar is pressed. So we're going to focus on this if. And currently, when we run this, we press the if, we did this in lesson 16, it's going to go this direction. But now what we want to do is when we don't press the space bar, it's going to do something else. So what we want to do is change this if to an if else. Okay, so that's really the key part there is you change this to an if else and you're going to make these rotate a certain direction when you press the space and when you want to have them go the other direction you're going to change those values over here so if i actually drag this over a little bit so you can see them see how this one goes up this one or this one goes down this one goes up and this one increases and in order to change that we would just reverse that so if the blue gear if it's not being pressed then we're probably going to have an increase and you just got to take these numbers, compare them, but you're going to have to drag an if else in here and do that. Okay. Step three of the skill building is they took the same exact program, but with one small difference. Well, if we look down here at line 13, it says how to control the gears, run the program and test whether you were correct. So if we press the left mouse button, now we're actually getting into mouse commands. So if I run this and I press the left mouse, it's going to go this direction. And right now, if I press right, it doesn't do anything. It says make the gear spin the opposite way when there is no user input. So same idea. We're going to use this, but we're going to make an if else. And the else is going to be the opposite direction. And when you do if else's, the else, if nothing happens, will continue to move over and over and over because it's in a loop. So if I drag an else in here and say that they're going to do opposite direction of these, they're going to do that until I press the if button and or the left button that matches up with this if. So currently, when I press the if, it does this. We want to add an else so that they're going to move in the opposite direction until we actually press that if or until we press the left button. Okay, and then skill building four, a program that drops a balloon down the screen, use an if else statement to make the balloon go up and down according to whether or not the user is pressing the mouse. So again, we're going to have to use an if else. Most of these are what you're going to have to do. And then you're going to have to work through the mouse down. So if I drag an if else over to here. So as we move the if else over to this location, we're going to drag the this code right here. So this we want the balloon to always move down the screen. But if we're pressing the mouse button, 
like this, when we're pressing the left mouse button down, we actually want this to then go up. We want the balloon to move up. So we're going to take this dot y right here, change this to balloon. And then we're going to do the same concept with this, except instead of add to it, we're going to subtract because as we look at the grid, if we go down the Y location, the Y is increasing. We want the Y, lo y location to go to decrease as we move it up. So then we're going to go to math and we're going to take a subtraction. And then we're going to drag out dot Y again. And we're going to subtract one. And if we did this correctly, it's going to move down as I press the mouse. Oh, mouse down. Drag that off. I just had a typo there. So instead of the left button, we want to just do left. Interesting. Ah, yeah, spelling error there. You always got to watch the spelling errors here. So it didn't know what it was doing. So I had this spelled incorrectly and the S instead of the A there. Now let's reset it and run it. And so it's gonna move down the screen. If I press the left, it's gonna go up and it's gonna continue because what happens is with the else is it's adding to the Y location until I press the left mouse button. Okay, so hopefully that helps you with this, gets you through the mouse input. The next one here is another skill building, um, but I'm gonna leave that one for you to work on I will just talk briefly about this. So it says the program uses an if block to shake the blender when the mouse is on the left side. Actually, let's go ahead and talk about this for a second. So currently when we hit run, this is shaking. And if I move my cursor to the right, it does not. But when I move it this way, it does. And so if we go look at our code here, what's happening is it's taking the mouse location, its X location and saying, if it's less than 200, we're gonna have the X and Y locations just change and you can do this by a random number so every time it moves over there it's picking a number between 95 and 105 and 295 and 305 so we can do the exact same thing with this because see how the blender is working like that and it says use the if block to shake the blender when the mouse is on the left side of the screen add the conditional so that the mouse is on the other side of the screen and the mixer shakes instead and then you can expand this too to do an if else to make them add code to make the mixer shake. So I'm gonna just add another if to this because we're gonna do this with the um, the blender, or not the blender, the mixer. They're two separate variables. So now we want this one to shake. And we're gonna use the same concept as what's going on here. So we're gonna go over here to world, drag out the world X. Ah, I forgot a math. I do the math first but see how this is less than 200 we're going to look for a greater than 200. see if it'll let me do that it will not so we'll drag that whole thing out of here a second and do this again now i can drag the mouse x and let's say over here, if you look at the X, I want it to be greater than 250. So when the mouse is over on this side and it's greater than 250, now I want this to happen. So again, we're going to, instead of Blender though, we're going to use the mixer. So I can drag both of these over here. And instead these are mixer. and it's going to be equal to something. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take these random numbers. Okay. And so let's go ahead and take random number. 
and the X is let's say it's going to be between 250 and 275 or probably more like 260 and 275 Oh, and if you notice, this is kind of shaking here because I added this in, haha, <laughs> changing that up. So we want to leave it as 295. Okay, so now we're going to add another random number like this. And again, if I run this, I see how it's moving way up here because look at the random numbers are one to 10. I would like it more down here, like to 280 to 300. So let's give that a try. Actually, let's keep it on the same level as this. So we'll do 295 to 305. Okay, so then just to finish up here, 295, 305. So it's gonna, we're gonna keep it on the same Y axis as the other. So it just kind of stays, actually, there we go. And so now it's over here. If I wanted to, I could move this over a little bit, make this more like 275 and 295. Oops, and if I ran that now, there. They're just a little bit separated apart. Okay, hopefully that helps you with the mouse input for code.org. Good luck, and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more coding here.